What if NASCAR also used the points format in 2019 as well as 2020? In the last episode, we found out that Joey Logano would win the 2020 NASCAR championship if they used the ACS format, and we'll see what would happen in 2019. I think we'll keep going back into history and tell ACS comments on one of these videos. So, uh, yeah. For those of you who don't know how it works, so in this case in 2019 there were 33 drivers who raced pretty much the whole schedule and so the 36 races will be added over six rounds of six races each after each round uh, six drivers will be eliminated except the first round only three will be eliminated and then out of the six drivers in the final six races whoever scores the most points then will be crowned the champion wins will also lock you into the next round no bonus points, no stage points, and there will be points resets for each round. So let's get started. And as the Great Iceberg says, This is just a hypothetical situation. I know the racing would have been different. This is just for fun. Starting out, Denny Hamlin locked himself into the next round with a win at Daytona. Kozlowski with his two wins at Atlanta and at Martinsville. Logano with his win at Las Vegas. And Kyle Busch with his win at ISM and his 200th career win, which came at Auto Club. Heading into Martinsville, Bubba Wallace found himself 10 points behind Corey LaJoy and 12 behind Ross Chastain. However, a 17th place finish allowed him to advance, so it would come down to Chastain and LaJoy. Chastain's 34th place finish wasn't great, but it was enough to beat out Corey LaJoy, who finished 33rd. Chastain would advance by just one point. Corey LaJoy, Matt Tift, and Landon Castle would be eliminated. Once again, Denny Hammond would win the first race of the round, this time at Texas, to lock himself into the third round. Kyle Busch's win at Bristol did so for him, and Trix's two wins at Richmond and at Dover were able to get him into the third round. Chase Elliott won at Talladega, and Brad Kozlowski punched his ticket into the third round with a win at Kansas. Heading into the round of 24 cutoff, Daniel Hembrick, Matt Benedetto, and Chris Buescher were just barely above the cut line with Kyle Larson, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., David Reagan just below, Bob Wallace, Michael McDowell, and Ross Chastain kind of needed a miracle run. Top 10 for Larson was enough. An issue for De Benedetto as he finished 36 really hurt his chances and he got eliminated. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 11th place, just wasn't quite enough to knock out him. Ricky got 18th, then Chris Buescher, who finished in the top 10. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Matt Benedetto, David Reagan, Bubba Wallace, Michael McDowell, and Ross Chastain would be eliminated. Martin Truex Jr. punched his ticket into the fourth round with the win with wins at the Redacted 600 and Sonoma. Kyle Busch punched his ticket into the round of 18 with a win at Pocono. Joy Legrand locked himself in at Michigan, and Alex Bowen's first career win would be able to propel him to the next round. Heading into Daytona, the points were tight. Kyle Larson and Eric Jones were tied for the final transfer spot with Paul Menard only three points behind. Clint Boyer, the Dillons, and Ryan Priest pretty much had the win. Dillon and Boyer were actually battling for a lead when this happened. Stay out of the line as the racing continues. Austin Dillon. Oh, oh my God. Oh, it's going to be a big one. now around goes the three in front of the pack. They're all collected. The 11 with damage, the 22 as well. Big right here. Smoke rolling out of the cars that even cleared this incident. Justin Haley's win didn't do anything to the playoff picture as he wasn't competing full time. But Ty Dillon, Clint Boyer, Austin Dillon, and Ryan Priest would be eliminated by quite a bit. But at the cut line, there was very, was very close. Paul, uh, 16th place for Paul Menard put him through. Kyle Larson's 20th place finish was enough. But in a DNF from Daniel Suarez in last place, while that hurt, he had enough of a cushion that he was able to advance by one point over Eric Jones, who finished 23rd. So Jones would be eliminated. With Chase Elliott finishing 35th, he would also be eliminated in the round of 24 and not make it to the round of 18, much like 2020. A win at Kentucky would propel Kurt Busch to a round of 12, and Kevin and Har Harvick and Denny Hamlin each got two wins to lock themselves into that round. Heading into Bristol, Jimmy Johnson and Daniel Hemrick had to win, but other than that, it was mostly really close. Menard, Bowman, Almirola, Johnson, and Hemrick would be eliminated. 
an eighth place finish would be enough for Daniel Suarez to get into the next round. Joey Logano and Chris Buescher finishing 16th and 17th respectively were tied in points and it would have to come down to a tiebreaker of whoever had the better finish that round and that happened to be Joey Logano. Buescher, Bowman, Menard, Almirola, Johnson, and Henrik would be eliminated. Kevin Harvick would be the first driver to lock himself in the into the championship round with a win at Indianapolis. Martin Trick Jr. got two wins to punch his ticket to early too. Heading into Dover, Logano sat 16 points ahead, Blaney 12, Keselowski 9, Kyle Larson, William Byron were tied, Hamlin was 10 behind, and behind them it was kind of going to be hard. Kyle Larson actually won to lock himself into the championship round, being the third driver to do so. Joey Logano and Ryan Blaney would have big problems. And you hear Jeremy Bullen say, take it to the garage. 34th and 35th place finishes would eliminate them. A 4th for Denny Hamlin and a 13th for William Byron would move, allow them to move on. In addition to the winners and Brad Keselowski. Let's take a look at the championship contenders. You had the veteran Kevin Harvick with a solid season of uh, like 3 wins. Martin Trix Jr. in his first season with JGR getting like 6 wins. Both of those will be going for the second championship. The driver going through for his first championship, however, Kyle Larson had just one win up to that point and was on the cut line heading into the final races on pretty much every cut except the first one. You would have had Brad Keselowski going for two but hadn't won a race since Kansas. You had William Byron working with seven-time crew chief Chad Knauss, who also would have made it in 2020 under this format. Although he didn't have any wins, he was consistent enough to make it. Finally, you had Denny Hamlin, who had always come so close to winning the championship, but never quite getting it done. With five wins, would this be his year finally? Among drivers who weren't in the championship, Six included Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, Ryan Blaney, and Chase Elliott. Denny Hamlin got two wins at Kansas and at Phoenix. Martin Trix Jr. won at Martinsville and Kevin Harvick at Texas. Heading into Homestead, here's what the stands would look like. At this point, William Byron, Kyle Larson, and Brad Kozlowski would be eliminated, but Hamlin, Harvick, and Truex are neck and neck for the championship. Martin Truex Jr. fought his way to a second place finish, but it wasn't quite enough as he would end up with 179 points. Kevin Harvick would finish fourth, bringing his final tally to 183 points. Even with overheating issues, Denny Hammond still managed to finish 10th, which would bring his points total up to 183. That means that for the first time since 2011, there would be a point tie. They both won races that round, but Hamlin won one more and had more wins overall that season. So I think that in this case, Denny Hamlin would have gotten his first cup title in 2019 if NASCAR had used the ACS Summer Showdown format. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you did enjoy. Make sure you do subscribe if you have not already and hit the bell. So don't miss out. Let me know if that will have any other good ideas for points formats. Maybe the THCS Season 5 for 2020 or something. So let me know in the comment section down below your ideas. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thanks for watching.